Okay. As mentioned before, this meeting will be recorded, so the recording has started. Uh, tonight we are talking about Highlands Ranch. This is the plan community, the early years, and I will be your presenter for this evening. We do want to acknowledge the source of a lot of our photos and information. Uh, the photos that were not necessarily taken by the Highlands Ranch Historical Society itself, a lot of them came from the Highlands Ranch Metro District. So special thanks to Terry Nolan, Jeff Case, and Sherry Eppers for that. So in terms of the Highlands Ranch timeline, we're going to be covering tonight 1976 through 1997. This is a pivotal time in Highlands Ranch. This 1976 is when Lawrence Phillips Jr. dies, and he was the owner since 1937. So for almost four decades, uh, he owned Highlands Ranch, he lived here, he loved the ranch, and he was the last true rancher on Highlands Ranch. Then we're going to look at the planning phase from 1977 to 1981. We're going to look at the early community, 81 to 87, 87 to 97, how we continue to round out the community. And then we're going to end tonight with, uh, we chose 1997 as our milestone because that is the year that Mission Viejo, including Highlands Ranch, was acquired by Shea Homes. So you got a change of uh, ownership at the planning and at the top corporate levels of Highlands Ranch. So to start this out, uh, First, we talk about Mission Viejo. When they first came here in 1977, as you can see from the photo, it was a ranch. It was truly where the antelope roamed. They were out here. There was not much in the entire area. In 1977, Marvin Davis purchased the land from Lawrence Phillips Jr.'s estate for $13.66 million and markets it for development. Marvin Davis was a oil and real estate tycoon. He was nicknamed Mr. Wildcatter, and he started his road to fortune in oil and gas exploration, later expanding into real estate in the entertainment industry. Marvin Davis owned 20th Century Fox Studios from 1981 to 1985, and Marvin Davis, uh, when he died in September 2004, at the time Forbes estimated his fortune to be $4.9 billion. Then in 1987, Mission Viejo came into the scene, and they purchased an option to begin the development and plans to begin that development. Now, of course, it was a ranch all the way up until Mr. Phipps died, and it continues to be a ranch. It continued at that time and into the future. So as you can see here, they continued to ranch uh, the cattle. Uh, Mission VA Hill, when they came in, wanted to keep the ranching operation going for multiple reasons. And so Mission Viejo uh, kept on the ranch foreman and two cowboys from the Phipps Ranch. And they ran approximately 1,800 head uh, in a cow-calf operation, which is where they have cows that then uh, create their own calves. And then they raise their calves for sale. And when they would take their calves to market, that they regularly got top price for those calves. And this actually made the Douglas County commissioners believe that Mission Viejo actually knew about ranching and about the ranching lifestyle and actually improve some of the trust between them, as we've heard from uh, people in the past. And then even to this day, Highlands Ranch still uh, continues doing ranching. The reason they do ranching today is uh, for not only raising the cattle, but a lot of it's also for the tax purposes, that it keeps all the undeveloped land still as, an, as the agricultural uh, tax area. You can see here in some of these early photos from when they first bought the ranch that the ranch buildings in and around Highlands Ranch Mansion, which are still there today, were the only buildings that you can see in all of Highlands Ranch. And you can see all the way to Chatfield in the distance and all the way up uh, to the front edge of Highlands Ranch. And I don't know exactly where that line is, but I'm guessing it's probably getting uh, over closer toward Quebec, where is kind of the eastern boundary. And with ranching, one of the key things and the key in the entire West is water. So one of the first things they had to do while they maintained the ranch was keep the water running. So here you can see well site number six of at least 12 that provided water for the cattle throughout their ranching days. We also know that water was vile at the mansion. Uh, so here you can actually see that there are two windmills up at the reservoir above the mansion. And we even have some historic photos showing that there used to be a, a windmill in the backyard of the mansion. Uh, but even between these two windmills, as you can see between the historic photo and the current photo, 
is the same rock structure still in place, but they've moved the hardware off of one and put it on the other. So they have updated that hardware over time. Next, before we, they really got into the planning, Hollywood actually came calling. And so Hollywood actually showed up. They originally went down to Cherokee Castle and Tweet Kimball who lives down there actually directed them up toward the Highland Ranch Mansion. And so for eight days in 1978, uh, the TV miniseries Centennial was filmed here. They came out and changed the name to Veniford Ranch. And then they filmed uh, parts of the miniseries right at the mansion. And here are some photos of them filming the mi miniseries. Also, if you've ever driven on Veniford Ranch Road, that was named after uh, the name in this miniseries. And so many of the ranch workers who actually were working at the ranch at the time actually got parts in the miniseries uh, because they were looking for extras to fill in and a lot of the ranch hands did that. The miniseries went on to win two Primetime Emmy Awards and was also nominated for two Golden Globe Awards. And as we look toward the development, we look toward the people and the personalities that were engaged in the leading in the planning of Highlands Ranch. Uh, with Mission Viejo, the chief executive officer was Phil Riley. He was over the entire organization, but the majority of Mission Viejo's stuff was actually their developments out in California. So he came out here, he oversaw it, but really he called upon Jim Teffer uh, Jim Teffer was in charge of Mission Viejo's Colorado operations and is known as the father of Highlands Ranch. Uh, Jim said that when he started, he really had no staff here. And he remembered a story of where Phil and, and Jim were standing down by the entrance of the ranch, which is near Broadway, where it crosses County Line Road. Uh, and there were cattle roaming all around. And he talked about how Phil uh, took his car keys, handed them to Jim, uh, like he was handing him the keys to the ranch and said, Jim, good luck. I'm going back to California. It's all yours. So from that point forward, Jim Teffer was in charge of building a community out of a ranch. And to help him run that ranch, uh, he had someone that he knew from California come out, Art Cook. And Art Cook decided that he didn't want to work in the office. So he actually worked mostly as the ranch manager. And he also led a lot of the community activities in the early Highlands Ranch for Mission Viejo. And so then the planning began and they had to overcome the big fear uh, that has had been in Colorado for quite a while and that's Californification of Colorado. So they actually created a plan uh, that left more than 60% of Highlands Ranch's open space. And they have followed through to that plan even to this day. But you can see where they have different planning things. They did a lot of aerial photography uh, really started looking at where the original uh, community was going to be and how it would tie in with the whole metro area. And then down in the bottom left, you actually have another picture. This was one where they actually had the Douglas County Board of Commissioners uh, and they brought them out to the Highlands Ranch Mansion and they're actually showing them these early plans for Highlands Ranch to get their approval uh, so that they could get the zoning and get the county to approve Highlands Ranch. And one of the commissioners at the time was Tweet Kimball, who actually was the owner of Cherokee Castle and was really concerned about Highlands Ranch and encroaching upon her uh, lands just to the south, which is part of the reason, plus the hilliness, as to why a lot of the southern part of Highlands Ranch was left as open space. Plus it gave, uh, for the rest of Douglas County that was and is still pretty rural in a lot of areas, a nice buffer from the more densely packed Highlands Ranch down toward the rest of the county. And this was the development plan that they originally came up with in February of 1979. And in this plan, you can see they have a big ring road that goes around the center of Highlands Ranch. And then you have a future highway that goes right along the north side of Highlands Ranch. So both of these things are, were in the plans from the very beginning. And you'll see that some of the plans stayed the same and some of the plans ended. Now, come 1979, the board, the board of Douglas County Commissioners finally approved Highlands Ranch. And as you can see here in a combination of inter-office memos between, with, from Phil Riley and Jim Topher, 
uh, a lot of congratulations uh, as we get into 1979 and into the 1980s. This was back in the age before email. So as you can see, even this correspondence was sent out on August the 8th, but it actually didn't get received by the recipient till August the 11th. So not everything happened immediately back in the late 70s, like we, we expect today with our cell phones in our pockets. So it is a good highlight of how the process worked and big congratulations to everybody who worked on the project to get the Douglas County Commissioner's approval. So now let's actually move into the Highlands Ranch a little bit more. So we start looking at some of the first homes here in Highlands Ranch. And as you can see, the prices have actually gone up quite a bit since Highlands Ranch first opened. When they opened up, uh, homes were selling from the 70s to the 90s and even the low hundreds down here in Highlands Ranch. And even back then, you could still look out your back window and still see the antelope running through the field. So that was still going on. And in 1981, which is what makes this our 40th anniversary this year, uh, in September of 1981, the first homes in Highlands Ranch started to be sold. And the first couple to purchase a home was Phil and Kay Scott. And here you can see them filling out the paperwork for their very first home. And now in the thing, you can see Dad Clark and Broadway here. And the very first homes were not exactly at that intersection, but the actual very first homes were actually back in this neighborhood back here, uh, a little bit further down Broadway, about halfway to Highlands Ranch Boulevard today is where the very first homes were built. And once again, like we talked about with the ranching, the biggest thing that you have to deal with whenever you start a new community or do anything in Colorado is water. You need to make sure that you have water available to you. And the big person that was responsible for the water was Joe Blake. He set up many of the partnerships that Centennial Water used and are still in place today. And so with this, uh, they also went through and they had to look for flood management, storm sewers. And then in 1981, they also set up the, what became known as the Joseph B. Blake Water Treatment Plant. So you can see in some of our photos here where they're actually building water tanks to actually both store water and to give water pressure to the community. Uh, culverts for the storm water running underneath the roads. Storm sewers uh, made of concrete that run underneath the residential roads. And then this is a aerial photo of the water the original water treatment plant, which is still there. It's just off Plaza Boulevard, uh, west of uh, what is now Lucent Boulevard. So if you go in that direction, you can actually still drive by this building. And that is still where they have some of their offices. Now, for the rest of the community, it was really still building upon a future vision in 1981. Almost everything that was promised in Highlands Ranch was just that, it was a promise. So in 1981, uh, Northridge uh, just was assigned. They were gonna build an athletic club. They were also gonna build a community park. And here you had some nice sketches of what that athletic club someday would look like. But if you drove by it in 1981, it was just, under construction. There wasn't anything there you could actually go and see or visit. And on a bigger impediment to the people who lived here was there were no schools. So even their elementary school kids being in the Douglas County School District had to get on a bus and get bused all the way down to Castle Rock for, to go to elementary school. So long bus rides uh, way out in the middle of nowhere still. So there was there were some very early growing pains that the first homeowners had to overcome. They also had their first fire truck. If you have a new community, you need to make sure you have fire service. So they got themselves a fire truck. Now the fire truck itself has an interesting story in the fact that in that first year they had a grass fire. So with the grass fire, they rolled the fire truck out just to find out that all the water in the tank had frozen. After that, they decided to be able to better protect the community, they needed to work with an established fire department. So they actually signed it, an agreement with uh, Littleton Fire for future protection of Highlands Ranch. And that uh, agreement stayed in place until they switched to South Metro Fire District in 2018. Then in 1982, you finally got 
the beginnings of your community a little more established. You got Northridge Park that opens, the Northridge Rec Center uh, with a big party out there on the balcony, as we can see in the photo, uh, since the community was very big. And you also got Northridge Elementary. In Northridge Elementary, uh, the Mission Viejo knew that to really develop homes that they needed to develop even the land and the people that were here. And so uh, Mission Viejo actually, under Jim Teffer, donated the land to the Douglas County School District to build the elementary school. Now, at least the youngest kids did not have to get on that bus anymore, that they could go to the local school. Does that mean that things are ready to be developed around here? If you look at it, what you can see is you can see Dad Clark coming in here, and you can see a section of Broadway, but everything else around it uh, in 1982 was still very much fields. And over here on the far left, that's uh, Northridge Elementary School uh, back there, and the rec center is right here in the center. But everything else is there. But then you do look at why was there such a wide street? Well, this was actually the Mission Viejo Finance Group. They came in and they actually convinced Jim Teffer that it was more economical in the long run to actually build the full-size streets all at once than to come back a year later or a couple years later and have to continually increase the size of the streets. So they did build out the streets at the very beginning to the same size that we still see and use today. But you also notice that Broadway does not continue north uh, toward 470, but you would actually have to turn and go east on Dad Clark. And the entrance to get up to County Line Road was a little bit further up the road. And no, there are no homes hiding east of uh, the, the Northridge Rec uh, Elementary School either. Uh, when you look out uh, to the east, that was also just empty fields, as far as the eye can see back in 1982. Now come 1983, you actually start to get some improvement of services. Uh, Highlands Ranch Metropolitan District actually builds their office buildings. They're still in those office buildings today. They're at Broadway and Plaza, and you can still see that same building. Uh, but they also needed more water treatment and wastewater treatment. So they built the Marcy Gulch Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, this is just off of Santa Fe. This is the main wastewater treatment plant for Highlands Ranch. And if you've been driving by there recently, you can see that it's undergoing a major renovation. I'm really looking forward to when we have a uh, presentation coming up here from Centennial Water to hear about uh, the evolution of the water treatment plant. But this is where they actually started with a bigger and more robust water treatment plant uh, for the community. And talking about water, the next thing that they were looking into is, I know the place that we've all gone to, the Highland Ranch Reservoir. If you say you haven't heard of the Highland Ranch Reservoir, well, that's because those same finance people that said to build the roads extra wide also came back and said that in the end, uh, they would make more money by putting homes where the water is versus getting a premium off the water. But if you're trying to grasp exactly where this is that they were planning on building the Highland Ranch Reservoir, uh, this is where the King Supers would be, right where Highland Ranch Parkway and University come together. So if you think about Highland Ranch Parkway when you go west from University, it goes down a rather steep hill and then you come up the hill on the other side. The plan here would have been to actually create that as a dam that goes all the way across and it would have backed up water actually almost all the way down here to where Mountain Vista High School is. That you would have had that large set setting of water. And then as you can see in there, even more detached plans, they actually went down into even types of homes is that it would have actually even created an island. And you could have, would have had an island in the middle of the reservoir uh, where even more homes could have been uh, purchased. So now we've seen some of their early stuff. We think about 1984. 1984 is the first shopping center. Here we are three years after that first house was built and they're just now getting the very first convenience store in Highlands Ranch. So the very first convenience store that went in there was a 7-Eleven. And that was right here. It's still, that building's still there, but at Broadway and Plaza, you actually have the shopping center and you have the United Bank that was also built in that area. So this was the beginning and allowed them to actually 
start having a community where they didn't have to leave the community to get uh, their convenience items. Now that convenience store today is no longer a convenience store. It's now the Purgatory uh, Cellars uh, Winery. So you can go there and it's a more high-end winery is what it's current, it is currently in that location. Now at the same time, you can also see in 1984, this is from October of 1984, that they were really thinking ahead about how to get more businesses uh, for jobs and for other things in here. And so you can see that they were looking at making another thousand acres of commercial land available right along Broadway. So you have the office park in here, which this office park is mostly known for where the movie theater ended up. And then you have the other office park that goes between Plaza and Highland Ranch Parkway, uh, where there's an assortment of uh, businesses along there also. But these, in 1984, is when they were announcing that they were planning on uh, making those areas open and available for more development. As we moved into 1985, we get a golf course. Over on the east side, the Lynx Golf Course opens. And so the Lynx Golf Course uh, provided the first golf course in the Highlands Ranch community. But that wasn't the main thing that changed uh, Highlands Ranch in 1985. The main change for not only Highlands Ranch, but all of the Southern Metro area was C-470. C-470 in 1985 opened up. And when it first opened, there were almost no cars on it and everyone, talked about why there was a highway where there was no cars or hardly any vehicles. And it was a, it was the highway for the future. And it had been blocked by a previous governor uh, for a while to try to reduce expansion, but now it had come, come in and this really opened up the highway. And I know if you had grown up in this area before that and you wanted to go from especially the Southern parts of Littleton and get over toward the tech center, is a lot of times you had to use County Line Road, which was a two lane hilly road that went up and down and did not seem like a good way to commute to and from the Denver Tech Center. And so with this highway opening up, not only did it open up Highlands Ranch, but it also opened up most of the Southern Denver suburbs that we know today. And then also in 1985, you got the Highlands Ranch Amusement Park. Another one of those things that you probably have never heard of. Why? Because you can see on the map that they have this area in green on the left side that's labeled AP. That was for amusement park. Uh, down in the area near the High Line Canal, this is actually where they were planning on putting an amusement park. They were actually in talks with Elitch Gardens who wanted to relocate from their historic location. And one of the options they were looking at was to actually move out into the suburbs. And Highlands Ranch with access off of Santa Fe was one of the locations that they were actually looking at. Now in the end, as we all know, uh, Elitch's Gardens actually chose the downtown location and is currently located uh, along the Platte River uh, in downtown Denver. And throughout this entire time, and all the way to today, construction continues. So just lots of hammers, lots of buildings, lots of roads being poured down, uh, permanently changing the landscape that is was the Phipps Ranch into the Highlands Ranch we know today as the bustling suburb. Now in 1986, five years, uh, yeah, five years into our thing, uh, we have Sand Creek Elementary opens. So this gave a second elementary school into the Highland Ranch area. So now you didn't just have one, but you actually had a couple elementary schools to serve the community. Then in 1987, you finally get the junior high and high school. So six years after the first house uh, opened in Highlands Ranch, uh, the high schoolers and the junior high kids no longer had to take the bus all the way down to Castle Rock. They could now stay here in Highlands Ranch and go to the new Highlands Ranch junior and senior high school uh, in the building which is the high school today. So come 1988, 
uh, the first Highlands Ranch fire station opens. So up to this time, still the fire crews are still coming up from Littleton. They're not actually here in Highlands Ranch. So 1988, for the first time, Highlands Ranch now has its own fire station, Fire Station 17. Uh, this is the one that is over by East Ridge Rec Center. Uh, you, can see, you can see all the people standing there, happy to do the groundbreaking of the fire station and the fire station as it looks uh, more recently. In addition, you also had the Highlands Ranch Christian School that became part of the Denver Christian Schools opened here in Highlands Ranch. I believe it's gone through uh, several changes of ownership since that point in time, but it had opened uh, back in 1988. In addition, in 1988, Highlands Ranch hosted the Parade of Homes uh, for Veneford Point and Falcon Hills. And for those that have been around for a while, the Parade of Homes had a different meaning a different feel to it uh, back in the 80s. Uh, back then, they actually just chose one community, and normally it was some of the highest end homes in the entire metro area, and that community was really spotlighted as the only community in the Parade of Homes. I know more recently, they've actually gone to a more distributed Parade of Homes where they have hundreds of homes throughout the entire Denver area for people to go to, but back then, it was considered to be basically one set of homes on a single block that epitomized the best homes in Denver at the time. And in 1988, Highlands Ranch got the honor to host that parade of homes. And what made Highlands Ranch such a great place? Well, Highlands Ranch had a lot of activities. Highlands Ranch did sports for the kids. Thank you. Sorry for that pause for a moment. All right, so continuing on, they also had a lot more events that were going on for kids. Uh, they had an Easter egg hunt. They had uh, dealing with livestock, sack races, uh, Christmas caroling. They actually had a soapbox derby. Uh, that was actually held just one year. They did had 20 cars in their soapbox derby and they did it on a hill down near the Metro District headquarters. Then they also set up a little uh, building where uh, the kids could go and see Santa every year. So very important to have events for the kids and build that sense of community. They also, if you deal with the kids, you want to also deal with the families. So they had a lot of events for the families. They had events out at the ranch where they uh, had all the steers. They even had the kids and stuff come out and watch the branding when they used to brand the animals. Uh, they had parades, uh, many events at the mansion, uh, including you have the big uh, Miller light can here. And that was because Mission Viejo's owner at the time was Philip Morris. And so Philip Morris owned Miller beer. And so that's why they actually sponsored quite a few events here in Highlands Ranch uh, in the early days. And then they even had uh, the Olympic torch run through Highlands Ranch on its way to the Olympic games. So a lot of events for families and even some events uh, for the families with more of an adult sort of theme to them. So we have several here at the mansion where we have uh, full-size adults on big wheels doing races. We have dinners and barbecues and wine and beer socials. So a lot of different events. So it wasn't just families, but building that sense of community was a big part of trying to build the Highlands Ranch lifestyle. Now, as we get into 1989, this is when RTD for the first time uh, really gets down to Highlands Ranch. They open a park and ride at University and C470. And so a huge celebration was thrown for the very beginning of RTD coming into the Highlands Ranch area. Then the 1990s, we got Bear Canyon Elementary opening. You also have the Highland Heritage Regional Park open. And this is off in Douglas County or Douglas County actually uh, is in control of that park. Uh, but I know they work a lot with Metro District in maintaining it, but it is, a, it is a county park. So that one occurred in 1990. 1991 was the 10th anniversary of Highlands Ranch. 10 years in, Highlands Ranch's population had grown from just a handful of people working on the ranch to a population of 17,000 people. Uh, Falcon Park also opened. The Crest Ridge Pool opened. Now the Crestridge pool is the outdoor pool at Eastridge today. 
You also have the Crestridge Middle School opening. As it's continued to grow, uh, they need more space for the high school and the middle school, so they separated the two into two different schools. In 1991, you also got the first branch of the library opening. Now, this is in that same shopping center that the original 7-Eleven opened, but this is down on the opposite end of the shopping center. You got the Highland Ranch Library, and you had the people that were able to check it out and get books in their own uh, community. And the search of capturing knowledge and learning knowledge, 1991 is also when the Highland Ranch Historical Society begins. The first members were and elected officials showed up at that October 2nd, 1991 event, and there were five of them in total, and they elected Donna Rood as president. And they chose to come up with a logo that was done by Mary Elliott, Mary Elliott, who has done a lot of the posters for HRCA over the years that reflected the Highland Ranch Mansion stairs. Now as we move into 1992, we finally get the post office opening. So the Highland Ranch post office opens and Summit View Elementary School opens. 1993, more than 4,000 people are employed in Highlands Ranch, and nearly 360 businesses are opened and running throughout the community. By 1994, the Highlands Ranch is recognized as the best-selling master plan community in the United States by the Arthur Anderson Real Estate Advisory Service. And you also get Albertsons, the community's first grocery store. And I've been to that Albertsons. It's no longer there, but it used to be at Broadway and County Line Road. And so it was technically on the north side of County Line Road. So even though it was an Albertsons that served the community, it wasn't technically in the community. It was just north of the community. And at that same year, you actually got the second fire station opening, Fire Station 16. Now this fire station might not look familiar to a lot of people. It is the one that's actually on Santa Fe, near Santa Fe in C-470. And it's actually set back just a little bit. So it's way on the very west side of uh, Highlands Ranch. 1995, High Woods, the really high-end custom home community on the more southern side of Highlands Ranch uh, opens. You also get both Fox Creek Elementary and Coyote Creek Elementary opening. And the Cherry Hills Community Church opens. You also get the James G. Teffer Park. So we talked about James Teffer up front as being the father of Highlands Ranch. And here is where uh, the Metro District has dedicated a park to him. And so at this point, I'm actually gonna take a short break here because for the Highlands Ranch Historical Society also wanted to honor uh, Mr. Teffer and recently uh, pre presented him with a plaque. and I'm the Vice President of the Highlands Ranch Historical Society in charge of programs. All right, can you hear it now? It's Paul McKay, and he is in charge of community relations, community outreach, and logistics. We also have Nancy Vinson Bigler with us today from the Highlands Ranch Historical Society, and Nancy does the tours. She is in charge of the... the what is your title here? I don't know. About the anniversary committee. Memory. She's in charge of the anniversary committee for the Highlands Ranch Historical Society for the 40th anniversary of Highlands Ranch. Okay. I'd like to introduce you to Jim Teffer. And if Teffer sounds familiar, you may uh, have been to Teffer Park in Highlands Ranch. We also have Diane. Dykstra. Who was a Teffer? <laughs> Dykstra. And who is Jim's, Jim's daughter and son in law, Forrest Dykstra. Okay. Jim planned Mission Viejo in California. When the company was purchased by Philip Morris, they sent him to Aurora to do a community. While here, he heard the Phipps property was for sale. After closing, uh, excuse me, uh, for sale, Mission Viejo purchased it, the property. 
After the closing, Jim received the keys to what is now the Hollins Ranch Mansion and was told, Jim, it's all yours. 22,000 acres to develop. This was in 1976. The master plan community of Hollins Ranch was built with honesty and integrity as its goal. Innovation, vision, hiring employees, planning, working through the public and official resistance, zoning, permits, infrastructure, water, sewer, utilities, roads, environmental sensitive landscaping, providing for schools, stores, churches, and parks, listening to people, providing what they wanted, marketing, and the end result was a community with all the amenities that people like. A great place to live, work, learn, worship, play, and shop with 15,000 acres of open space. The first home was sold in 1981. Okay, um, actually, um, my sister who isn't here, they were the second people to move into Highlands Ranch after the Scotts, Bill and Kate. And I'd like to just mention that I know Dad's goal at the very beginning of all of this, and Phil Riley's as well, was always to plan for families, first and foremost. And I think it's, it's good to note that he has his children, his grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Almost all of us live here on, on the ranch still today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May I add, add something, or? Is it, um, no, you just have to sit quietly. Yes. Okay, sure. All right, for us. So, you know, it's been great living here for, for all the years that we have and see the community that, that Jim planned um, to come to fruition. Uh, we've got over 98,000 residents, multiple businesses, and like Sarah mentioned, the parks and trails and, and landscaping and churches and, and retail and the office park has just, just been a great um, culmination of the vision that Jim had 40 plus years ago. Celebrating the 40th anniversary of Howland's Ranch, it is our honor to present this plaque to you. You want to turn it around, please? Okay, now read it. <laughs> I'll be happy to. So the Highlands Ranch Historical Society, this is an Historical Appreciation Achievement Award, our very first that we've ever issued. And it's presented to James G. Teffer, President, Colorado Division, Mission Viejo Company, for outstanding vision, performance, and leadership in the development of Highlands Ranch, 1976 to 1988, and it's presented by the Highlands Ranch Historical Society on the 40th anniversary of Highlands Ranch, which is 2021. So we're going from 1981, when the first homes, first people moved here, to today, 2021. We should present it to you, Jill. Thank you so I much. Love you. Thank you. And now, well, Jim, would you please just say a few words? I can't. I'm speechless. No, I'm not I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you know, I accept these things on behalf of not me. There were so many people that uh, that came with me, came over here on a risk. There was Phil Riley and me, and we came down on um, what is County Mary Road, and uh, he gave me the keys after we closed escrow, and he said, Jim, it's all yours, I'll see you, and he got on an airplane and went back to California. I didn't see him for a long time. But be developing a staff with nobody was very difficult, but I had a caliber of people that were just exquisite. And so anyway, we, um, Took the, you know, on, on so many things, I, I could write a book this thick of, of the things that have happened uh, to me personally and to uh, the things that happened here. C uh, catching people that were thinking we were building an underground city. You know, they, were th they thought for sure we were building an underground city. 
and uh, I think there ended up more guys in jail and than they were developing the police. But anyway, it was a... Um, well, a, uh, Jim, we thank you very much. We don't have very much time. I would like to say that uh, to our friends in, um, at Wincrest, that Jim is full of stories. He has wonderful, wonderful stories. So give him a call. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And thank you all for being here. I don't have that many stories, but uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me come again. Thank you all for being here, and we appreciate all that you have done. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Historical I, Society, I, Nancy, isn't there Sarah. There are a few things I can say. Paul, everybody. And I say just a few things. No, no, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. I just know we have a limited amount of time. Yeah, the only thing, okay, the only thing I was going to say was um, when we were talking in the car um, coming back today, we were talking about how um, Dad has had visions since he was a young boy um, when he was an Eagle Scout. And he would also take me out when I was a little kid and then his grandsons out. And he used to look at the clouds and say, what do you see up there? What do you see? You know, and we would build cities and all kinds of things. And he said that he could see things, um, not not like woo visiony things, but he could picture things, and so his creativity and his imagination helped develop both Mission Viejo Company or Mission Viejo, California, and then Highlands Ranch, and um, and so I think if there was nothing else that um, I could say about about Dad's cont contribution to this world, if you will. It was um, that he was given, he was blessed with the opportunity by Phil and um, Don Brand to step in and help develop not one, but probably three, at least three different communities, four actually, if you want to count Arizona, which nobody talks about, but, <laughs> but all that to say, it's because he had, he was blessed with this, this ability to dream. And the best part about it is that he got other people on board with him that were Art Cook and some of the most wonderful people that you've ever met that could come alongside of him and help those dreams become real. Mm -hmm. And so um, his legacy, if you will, I think would be to, to dream big and, um, and take opportunities when you can and uh, enjoy Highlands Ranch and you know, the things that they always were, their, their goal, his and Phil's goal was always for family, 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 and I think that they they achieved. Diane and I first started dating in, in 1981, and and she was living here in Highlands Ranch, um, uh, down near uh, South Park and Broadway. I remember driving down Broadway, and here's this six-lane road with like three cars on it, and thinking, what in the world is going to happen here? But as as we're at 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 a point 40 years later, you can look at the planning and and realize that the planning that's put in this community is is one of the great things that makes Highlands Ranch what it is today. And you did, you did do oh, a lot of the, the talk at the mansion, and people can have access. And this is for That's on your website, isn't it? No, yeah. but I, I just think you can never accomplish anything unless you have real competent people. And I've reached out, and I've tried finding the best we could. And fortunately, we ended up with a great district, and we found great employees. And for the most part, everyone were very, a lot of integrity and so forth. I could tell you stories that would been back in California the okay. region. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. I'd also like to give a big thank you to uh Sarah and Nancy and Paul for uh, bringing that together. Uh, that's very important that we recognize uh, Jim, and I'm very happy that we were able to do that. Uh, some of the things that I did highlight in there was uh, how his daughter had talked about how he was such a dreamer, and the fact that that dream helped become what Highlands Ranch is. And the fact that he really thanked the people that worked with him, not just himself, but his whole staff. And that's the sort of uh, selfless dedication that is needed to really build a community. All right, next in 1996, uh, we had a couple 
events that happened as we get here toward the end of where we're going to get go tonight. Uh, we have the Cougar Run Elementary School opening. We also finally get the second high school. Uh, the Ranch View Middle School and Thunder Ridge High School begin to open. And this actually reminds me of something that I heard a comedian once say uh, back here in about the late 90s that Highlands Ranch had stopped raising cattle and was now in the business of raising children. Back in 1996, you also had the library mill levy passed. So this was gonna get the funding for Highlands Ranch to get a true library uh, built in Highlands Ranch. But another one you may not know about is in that same year, they got an agreement signed uh, with the county to build a county regional park within the Wildcat Mountain Reserve. So between Monarch and Griggs Road, uh, just in the area right between the homes and we're back country, well, kind of in the back country area, is the future Wildcat Regional Park. This is a 202 acre park and it's been planned several times. I saw many articles talking about how this park would be open by 2003. As you know, there's not an active park there. It's just an empty field still. And in, when Metro Districts just did a survey in 2014, they found that 43% of the people thought that it was important to develop this park. By 2019, that number had actually dropped down to 38% uh, believe that it's still important to develop this park. So it's actually losing uh, kind of focus even amongst the people that live in Highlands Ranch as uh, being needed. So when this park gets developed uh, is anyone's guess. We don't know when that one's going to be there, but that land has been deeded over to Douglas County to be a future regional park. The next event you have in 1996 is you have the Safeway. This is probably truly what I would call the first one that was physically inside the boundaries of Highlands Ranch. And so the Safeway finally opened in 1996, 15 years after the first house, uh, you had the first Safeway that opened just down the street. You also had the Red Rocks Federal Credit Union moving into its headquarters here in Highlands Ranch. And in 1996, Highlands Ranch actually started its official newsletter called The Chronicle under Dick Oaks. That lasted for one year. And at the same time, the Highlands Ranch Historical Society was in the process of meeting at the library conference room located uh, on Springer Drive, which is right there by uh, Plaza and Broadway. And they met on the last Wednesdays of the month. And you can see the uh, board of directors uh, that was in charge of Historical Society back in 1996. Then in 1997, Trailblazer Elementary opens. This one was actually an interesting one by the fact that this was the first school that was completely built with contributions from Highland Ranch builders, is the home builders had so recognized the need for elementary schools that they actually put up the money to build the entire uh, Trailblazer Elementary School. And so that was an important recognition of how, how important elementary schools especially were to the community. Uh, you also have the AMC Highlands Ranch 24 Theater opening. So it opened for the first time in 1997. Additionally, uh, the Highlands Ranch Golf Club opens. So Highlands Ranch now has two golf courses. Uh, the West Ridge Pool opens and the East Ridge Rec Center. So the second rec center finally opens in 1997. And by this point, the population's grown to 46,000, a little less than half of what it is today. Uh, the fourth interchange on C-470 opens. It was originally called Highlands Ranch Boulevard, uh, later renamed Lucent. I wasn't able to find a photo of Highlands Ranch Boulevard, so I'm still looking for that one. And finally, Shea Homes, which is our stopping point, it's a division of the JF Shea Company, acquired Mission Viejo, which included Highlands Ranch for an estimated 400 plus million dollars. All right. And with that, I'm going to go down here and allow people to actually unmute their microphones. So if you want to unmute yourself and ask any questions, please feel free to ask questions and I'll do my best to try to answer them or I can take them down and try to get information to you later.
I do see a chat one that says, uh, please share the URL of the video. I do plan on putting the URL uh, when I upload this uh, up to the YouTube and other places. I'll put the URL that uh, goes directly out to uh, the video of the present the award presentation also. All right, I see, does Frank raised his hand? I was gonna say, Frank, you can unmute yourself if you just wanna ask a question. You go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm Hetty Gold, Frank's wife. Okay. And uh, I don't know, but uh, that Sarah can speak to when she and David started the senior club in Islands Ranch. I don't have any insight on that. I don't know. Uh, Sarah, are you on that you would know when the senior club started? She and, the, and David started it. Yep, I'm sure she did. I have not looked through all the attendees to see if she's even attending this evening. I, actually I believe not. she is. I believe she is. Okay. I don't want, know what the date was. All right. Um... You're 2004. On? Okay, 2004. You and David started the senior club. About the senior yes. What is going on with the new senior club, Sarah? New senior center. Senior center, excuse me. Oh. Um, Does that, do you know? Um, was Hawk privately. Oh, okay. Call it. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for starting the senior club. You're right. welcome. All right. Any other questions this evening? I see a comment on here. Someone's asking about uh, if there's full videos of Jim Teffer. If you, especially if you go out to our, I know, our, I believe on our website, but also on our YouTube channel, there are multiple videos of uh, Jim right. Tepper talking about different things in the history. Uh, in addition to that, there are also, uh, there's also videos out there about the Centennial movie, if I didn't mention that one earlier. Did Jim pass away recently? No, Jim's still alive. No. Okay, I thought um, he used to live at Crest and his, okay. <laughs> Just, okay, thank you. It, uh, let me, this is Nancy. If you do go to our website, which is the hrhs.org, um, I just posted a, an entire page of information on Jim and it's going to be located under on the left-hand side um, in the Highlands Ranch section, and it's called Highland, or it's called Tidbits, History Tidbits. And when I send out the updated email with this video on it, I'll have a link to that page. So there is more, um, more info on Jim on that page. There's more pictures, and there's a link to a previous program that we did about five years ago that Jim presented. So a lot of information on Jim on, on that page, and I will send it out to, uh, to everybody on our email list. So Beautiful. if you're not, if you're not very... on our email list, get on there. <laughs> Thank you. I am on the email. Good. Thank you. Good. All right. Any other questions this evening? If not, I really hope that people learn something new. Uh, I, know, I know I always learn something new about Highland Ranch every time I pull information together. So it's always fun for me to do some of these presentations and uh, pick up on some new facts about Highlands Ranch that I didn't know pre previously. All right, well, there's no more questions then thank you everyone. And I'll get this recording uploaded and make it available to everyone here in the near future. So thank you very much.